Hey everybody, um, so I'm just going to give it a second to let some people tune in <clears throat> and then uh, we'll get started. So I just wanted to make this little live update because I haven't actually uploaded anything for two months and I realised that when I did upload my video last, it was basically me saying hey guys, quick update, <laughs> I'll do a proper one in, in a week or so, and I never got round to it. Everything's been a bit mental, to be honest. Um, hey, Chelsea. So, I just wanted to give a quick update in regards to, hi Jane, um, the surgery and everything. A lot of you are, you know, the last I, that I'm aware of, yeah, the, um, the last video I uploaded was basically me saying that I removed the erectile device. Um, and thank you Riley and that uh, you know it was a bit of a bummer but it had to be done you know I had an infection and this that and the other do you have any tips for getting testosterone at 16 with unsupportive parents Leo good question I literally have no idea to be honest can you speak louder sorry am I, am I really quiet or maybe the volume's down on your phone I don't know um so yeah so the last thing I said erectile device was removed and yes I was in a lot of agony I had an infection the infection lasted 12 weeks in total so it was hard I had three rounds of antibiotics um, and even at the end of the third round it didn't work completely they did give me another prescription for antibiotics and I kind of just by that point just thought screw it you know I'm not taking any more you know see where this goes kind of thing and it just sort of went on its own so um, as I've said in my last videos, I'm a massive believer in like self-healing and stuff like that um, and letting my body fight the infection and, and whatever else on its own. So, yeah, I, I just sort of left it to it. Um, and, yeah. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> I'm so bad. I'm st I stall all the time. I'm so sorry. There's going to be a lot of ums in this video. But, it's safe to say it's been about four weeks now. I've been completely pain-free. And that's the first time since I had stage three in September, no, November 2016. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, it was over my birthday. Um, so yeah, November 2016 is when I had stage three, which is when I had the urethral hookup. I was in pain for, well, right up until stage four, basically, about 16 months. And the pain never really goes away from the urethral hookup. I still get some pain when I go for a wee and stuff like that, but it's not unbearable by any means. It's just It's just more of a uncomfortable feeling sometimes, but it's getting less and less and less as the time go on. So whereas before it was every single time, now it's just um, every now and then. So no biggie. Um, and I find that if I hold in my pee, because I, you know, I can't go for whatever reason, then it's much, much, much more painful. Um, but again, when I say much, much, much more, nothing to, you know, cry about or, you know, fall about, you know, feeling or whatever. Um, let me just read some of these comments. My dad and I had a heart to heart conversation a little while ago. He brought up how I'll always be his daughter and no one could change that. But I didn't tell him I'm FTM transgender. Well, then, Riley, that kind of, in all fairness, why would your dad say anything else? Do you get what I mean? Like, if, if you haven't told him you're trans yet, then why would he not say, you know, you're his daughter and always will be? I'm pretty sure my dad must have said that to me a thousand times before I come out as trans. Um, and, you know, to this day, he's still gutted that um, he doesn't have his daughter anymore. Um, but he's also kind of really pleased that he's got a son, you know? So, um, pros and cons to it all, really, isn't it? Hey, Shane. How really great to see you. Stay best. Um, that hasn't got a name on it, but, um, hello, thank you. Riley, I'm sorry, that's also what my dad said, and he knows I'm trans. See, Leo, that's, that's the thing, is that, you know, when your parents know, you, know you're trans, and then they still say stuff like that, that's where it starts to really, really hurt. Um, and it, it, it does get hard, it does re really get difficult, but I find that it's best to just really keep people, like, informed and educated, and, you know, try to stay as calm as possible in these scenarios it's it's just in my experience it's the best thing that i can suggest is that you know when your parents don't understand they're never gonna understand until you explain it to them you know this stuff doesn't just get learned 
by sleeping, you know. So, um, yeah, just try and get them to understand and educate them. And I always say to people as well, you know, if your parents really do struggle with things, either direct them to my videos. If that still isn't enough, then all the links for any and every way you can contact me are down below in the description. And you can get your parents to message me, no problem whatsoever. I'm happy to talk to anyone um, and help out in any way I can. Uh, wait, was it a 12 week infection? It was a 12 week infection, yeah. Um, God, <laughs> it was a nightmare. So it was 12 weeks, that was including the six weeks. Um, no. God, no, it must have been longer than 12 weeks then. Because it was eight weeks and then I got it removed and then it went on for six weeks after that. Yeah, so 14 weeks in total. God. Oh, it was so long. Um, yeah. Oh, God. Do you answer D to DMS on my Instagram? Yeah, but i got to admit, my Instagram um, doesn't like to notify me when I'm getting direct messages. So forgive me if I don't get back to people. I do... Um, make an effort to go on there and check. A lot of things go through to like filtered requests and stuff like that. I don't get why, I think Instagram needs to change that really. Um. You still wearing the jeans? No, I'm not, <laughs> but they are right here. So, so somebody's written, am I still wearing the jeans? I put on Facebook the other day that I popped back to my house to get changed because I was out and about on my motorbike. And, um, and the jeans I was wearing were actually quite uncomfortable. There wasn't enough room in them for me, if you catch my drift. So anyway, I go in my drawer, I get my jeans out, I put them on. I thought initially they felt a bit weird, but thought nothing else of it. And then I go out. Um, surprisingly spacious, exactly where they needed to be, but still felt quite uncomfortable. And I noticed that the pockets were really, really shallow. Um, so that not very deep at all. <laughs> so I stopped and I got off and I realised that they were girls' jeans, um, and they belong to Helen, who's my best friend, for those um, that don't know. And uh, yeah, so I had to spend the day in girls' jeans. That's the first time, admittedly, that I've worn female clothes since transitioning. Quite funny, really. Um, let me just get this back here. Uh, oh, where the comments gone? Uh, when meeting new people, do you immediately tell them you're trans, specifically someone you'd like to date? I do, actually. Um, it's one of the things I like to get out, usually straight after my name, if I'm totally honest, because for me, it's obviously, it's a big deal. It's a big, big deal. And I wouldn't want to... I, I mean, this. To, I'm not speaking for everyone, and lots of trans people like to do things different ways. Me, personally, I prefer to not feel like I'm lying about myself to somebody. I wouldn't want to be dating somebody, have it going really, really well, and then, um, you know, a couple weeks or months down the road say, oh, by the way, I'm trans. I feel like that would be a bit betraying, especially if, if things are going really, really well. I, th I feel like that person that you're planning on being intimate with has got a right to know. So that's just my personal beliefs. Um, I've got nothing to hide. I'm not ashamed of who I am. Uh, so yeah, I just I keep it plain and simple, keep it honest, keep it proud, you know. So yeah, um, I do personally. Um, you're right. Do you want my Insta so we can talk more? Oh, there you go, Leo. Leo, thank you for doing that. Uh, my parents still refuse to call me Aaron or he, and they kicked me out a few months ago. I've lived in a hostel, but now they still make me use women's bathrooms if I'm out with them or in local pubs. Oh my god. Um, you know, it took my parents about 10 years to actually call me Billy. And initially, I didn't mind. I was totally okay with saying, take your time, you know, nothing happens overnight. The way I sort of related to my parents is that my mum um, was in a relationship um, to uh, a wonderful guy, still is, uh, he's amazing. And I thought to myself, well, if I could manage to call in Dad, this man that I know as such and such, then, you know, it would be the same as them trying to call me Billy when they know me as Connie. So I tried my best to call him Dad, because I wanted to, because he's an amazing man, and I just, I couldn't. Um, so I did really feel for him um, in regards to 
you know, calling me Billy and stuff. So I never really went on about it. There was a breaking point where Mum kept calling me Connie. And I remember we were in the shop one day and I was looking at something and she was a little bit further down the aisle. And she went, oh, Connie, come and look at this. And I just wanted the ground to swallow me up. And I, saw, I remember just sort of like very quickly running over to her after looking around everywhere. Because I thought I looked so convincingly male back then. Um, and I remember going up to her and I said, listen, Mum, if you can't call me Billy, that's fine. Just don't ever call me by my birth name. You know, call me absolutely anything else you like, whether it be love or hun or, I don't know, munchkin, whatever she wanted to call me. Just don't say the name Connie or again. It, it literally pains me, you know. Um, and I think she saw the sincerity in, in what I was saying and she just said, okay, you know, that's fine. Um, and that was about five years into me changing my name. So it took her another five years. And the first thing she actually did was write Billy in my Christmas card. And then the following year she got me a birthday card that said son and it just sort of slowly built up from there. And I think strangely, I, like I bought her a dog <laughs> and when I would go to her house, she'd say to the dog, oh, where's Billy? Billy's just come in. And for her, I think that was easier to say it like that than it was to call me Billy directly for a little while. And now, even now, it, you can still see she's, you know, just trying to get used to it. And, uh, you know, I'm 14 years into my transition now. So, yeah, I mean, it takes time. Um, but like I said, my breaking point was just don't call me by my birth name. I don't care what else you call me. Just don't call me that. But just, you know, give people time. Uh, okay. Billy, can I see your arm as I am wondering what mine might look like after surgery? You can, but uh, bear in mind that I didn't have forearm phalloplasty. As you can see, both my arms still got all the skin on them there. So I didn't have forearm phalloplasty. I had pubic phalloplasty for my stomach. So the only bit they took off my arm was the bit for the urethra, which is inside. I'll show you now. So this is the scar from that. Um, going up here as well, as you can see. It helps anyway. Um, scar from the stomach. I think pretty, I'll show you now. There. So not too bad. I mean, it's, you know, that's my most recent one. Um, from March. So it's all healing really, really nice. Um, let me just do my jeans back up. So, yeah. Um, sorry, let me just, these comments are whizzing up. You're alive! <laughs> yes, Tyler, I'm alive. Um, what happened after your last operation? Um, I've sort of covered that in the beginning of this video. Uh, basically, you had the pump removed, and everything's healed really, really nicely. So I can't really complain, to be honest. Have you had penetration sex ever after surgery? If so, how was it orgasm after surgery versus before? Uh... <laughs> I obviously haven't had penetrative sex because a total of six weeks and obviously the whole time I was in a lot, a lot of pain. So I didn't use it for sex. Uh, so I don't know, I can't answer that question. I'm actually not going to get any more surgery now until next year. I've decided against it uh, for two reasons, which I'll tell you now. Uh, one, I've had an operation nearly every single year since 2014 and I'm kind of over it if I'm totally honest. Going through surgery takes a lot of mental strength um, and obviously physical strength as well. It takes a lot for your body to go through that um, and recover nicely and it, it's just very, very draining mentally and physically. And I think having that infection after stage four for me really put the cherry on the cake. I was so over it by that point. Uh, the clinic in London were really eager to reschedule my surgery so that I can have the pump reinserted in six months time. I obviously wasn't, so I've told them time and time and time again no, I'm not going to have any surgery till next year. So we'll see, you know, how this year plays out. Um, luckily, my girlfriend isn't too bothered about me not having the device. So that for me was a good, was tip the balance. You know, I was only now in on whether to just really try and gather the little energy I had left and go through it again. But once she said that, I was like, okay, I'll wait till next year. That's no, no problem. So, yeah, um, <laughs> I'm not bothered about it. I'm not in a rush anymore to get that pumper in after that experience. I'm more than happy just spending this year having some fun, going on holidays since I've not been able to do that for a while. Um, and I'm actually going to America um, 
on July the 1st. Mm. So yeah, I can't wait. I'm going to the States for the first time ever. Uh, so, so, so excited about that. Um, and I'm going to spend 18 days out there. Um, doing whatever I like. <laughs> so it's going to be amazing. So yeah, for that reason, I'm just, I'm going to stall it all till next year. I just want to live my life for a little while and do things that I want to do. So, yeah. Um, I shouldn't have put this iPad so far away. I don't know how to come out to my parents. That's a common thing I get asked, you know. And the one thing I will always, always, always say, it's the same as saying you're gay or lesbian, trans, pregnant, any news that you've got to break to your parents, which basically tells them that you're all grown up now. Um, it's easier said than done, I know, but it really is as simple as saying, look, my dad, I'm trans, and this means I was born female, I know, and I'm going to become a male, or it means I'm born male, I'm going to become a female, or anything in between. So, it's really as simple as that, and then the, the best thing I can advise to follow up with is, you know, if you have any questions and you're worried about anything, then, you know, you can ask me, blah blah blah, be sure to do your research so you've got some answers for your parents, if they don't have any answers for your parents, then maybe you can all research it together. I think that's a really good idea. Um, me and my mum did that uh, after I had my top surgery, and I think then she realised, you know, I was serious about this. We did research together, and I found that, you know, she was going on their random websites looking for random things that might help me, and since then she looked for stuff that <laughs> would stop me going bold. It obviously really, really worked. So, yeah. <laughs> but learn, learn together, and... Together, you will all form a greater understanding. The The main reason most parents worry or get aggressive or disown you or anything on that scale is because they're worried for your safety and they're worried that you're going to put yourself through something that is obviously, one, it's irreversible, and two, it, you know, it's quite damaging. It's a lot, a lot to go through and you're their kid. So that's just, you've got to bear in mind. You've got to remember when you were a kid, I'm not sure how many of you this has happened to, but I know for a fact that I, many, many a time, just went wandering off uh, through the fields by my house and I'd be gone for hours and hours and hours and in the meantime, my parents would have called me for tea or something, obviously I'm not there, uh, and then they have an absolute heart attack, send the whole street out looking for me, and then I come wandering back like nothing's wrong and what's the first thing they did? They shout at me every single time. They would scream and shout and have an absolute fit about where were you, why didn't you tell us, you shouldn't do that. So their first instinct when they were worried to death was to get angry because they were so worried about where I was and what could have possibly happened to me. So just bear that in mind, it's the same kind of scenario that when you tell your parents you're trans, a lot of people will just get angry because they just don't understand and they don't want their baby to go through something that's going to be really, really harmful. Um, and obviously they want you to be sure. So. I just think it's, it's good to have that understanding with them and education is key. It's just a massive, massive key. Um, so yeah, all in together, I really, really strongly advise it. Sorry if I rant on a bit too much. Uh, cheers. Try and call me Chop, which is an old nickname. It's having to use the woman's in local pubs and when I'm with them. Yeah, that is strange. Um, I mean, I was in that scenario myself a long time ago now. And I just kind of got to the point where I just avoided, um, avoided using toilets full stop, which then would lead to urinary tract infections. It was all a barrel of laughs, really, isn't it? It's just being trans is, is quite difficult. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't want you to do obviously what I did and, and get to the point where you just avoid using them. I don't know if it's worth. Um, you speaking to your parents some more and just saying that it really upsets you or, you know, I, I don't know really what to suggest in that scenario. Um, purely because I never really went out with my parents much. It's not a situation I've been in. Um, it was more with friends with me. My friends would give me weird looks or, or make suggestions if I was going into the men's toilets. So, yeah, but this was a long, long time ago when, you know, um, being trans wasn't really that heard of, especially female to male. So, yeah. Um, I never heard about the surgery you had. Can you explain more about it and what it involves? Um, 
Leo, so the surgery I had is called pubic phalloplasty. It means the penis is created using skin from the stomach. It leaves the least amount of sensation out of the three types of surgery, which is forearm, thigh, and stomach. So it leaves the least amount of feeling at the, in the end result. And uh, obviously, but in my opinion, less visible scarring, which is amazing. I, I'd much prefer that. And ultimately, I don't need any sensation in my actual penis to achieve an orgasm, since the orgasm comes from the feeling um, of the buried clitoris, which is at the base of my penis. So, you know, um, I don't really know how much well, I can explain. I mean, the surgery, the results I can get, stand to pee, use it for sex, and obviously the image of it. Um, downside is that, I've mentioned this in previous videos and everybody seems to disagree with me, but the downside is that um, with pubic phalloplasty, it can be a bit thick. It can end up being a bit thick. And ultimately, when I had the pump removed, Dr. Christopher did say to me, you know, I'm actually quite pleased because it was really, really thick. Um, and, you know, you may not have been able to use it. And I thought, I, th I did think the same thing, but then I've never looked at much penis in my life to have compared it to. So, you know, I didn't say anything. I just sort of got along with it. But it turns out it was actually really, really thick. So that's the only downside I see to pubic phalloplasty. Loads of people freak out about the fact that you don't have sensation. I personally really don't care because, like I said, you don't need it to achieve orgasm. So, yeah, whatever. I don't, I don't really mind. Okay. Oh. Sorry. My foster mum is not calling me Noah and she's getting me girl stuff and I don't know what to do. Um, that sounds a lot like someone I know. Um, when I was younger, in my early days of transition, someone in my family kept buying me girls' clothes. At the time, I just kept politely saying, oh, thank you very much, and I just put them at the back of my cupboard and carry on wearing what I wanted to wear. I remember them suggesting at one point, oh, you know, you haven't worn that nice top that I bought you. And I was like, oh, yeah, uh, where is that top? Oh, mm. You know, um, again, it was just a case of time, just waiting for time to pass. Um, with more time that passed, they realised... I was never going to wear those clothes, and um, I think if, if I remember correctly, there was a point where I just said, please stop wasting your money <laughs> on girls' clothes that I'm never going to wear. Um, it was always underwear as well. It was always always underwear in, like, 90s and stuff. And I was just like, do I look like the type of person <laughs> that would wear that? It was just so strange. Um, but, yeah, so I would just let some time pass, uh, and, you know, maybe if it just carries on, going on a bit too long, I would just say, look, really, like, have you noticed me wear this stuff? Just make light of this situation. You don't have to have a deep, long conversation about all these things, you know? It's my first coffee today. Um. Oh. Uh, what was it you were showing? I just seen you zip up your pants. <laughs> Uh, was it how good it healed? Um, I was just showing the scars on my stomach, which I've shown in many of my videos before, um, and on photos on Facebook and stuff like that, so you didn't really miss out on much. Um, thanks, Billy, for helping me through a hard time. You're totally welcome, JD. Um, I mean, I just chat random stuff on, on a video and, uh, hope it helps, and, um, it looks like it does, so thank you. I know this is not the moment to say I like you a lot. I follow you for a year or so. I hope you are fine. Thank you, Claudia. Thank you very much. Yeah, there's never a bad time to say that, you know? Um, and you're welcome, Leo. Yeah, I really just try and avoid using the toilets in places in the village, and thankfully I've been lucky and not had a UTI yet, but it does hurt sometimes. It can be really painful. I'm sorry, Aaron. But yeah, I love your videos, and I'm really excited uh, and what end result looks like. I'm very scared to begin the last steps, but also excited. You should be excited. It was very, very exciting. Um... Obviously, I said in my last videos that I was going to do a reveal. Now there's no point, because there's no pump. So, I'm not going to bother doing the reveal now. I'll, I'll save it for when I have the pump in. It makes sense. I mean, if I do a reveal now. I forgot to say as well, at the beginning of this video, um, I've actually come on Facebook Live not only to do a catch-up, but I was actually banned uh, on YouTube Live, sorry. I was actually banned from YouTube um, for two months. Yeah, I think it was two months. Uh, 60 days in total. I was, yeah, I was banned because one of my reveal videos was actually reported as inappropriate. 
and even though I actually eventually um, I was contacting somebody in YouTube, who the hell I don't know, and my video didn't get taken down, but the band still stayed in place, which was a bit weird. Because uh, I basically also explained to them, you know, in your, part, in your policy it states that I can show nudity in my videos, providing it's for educational purposes, which I strongly believe it is. Um, so, yeah, uh, my video got to stay up, even though they've removed two previously for that. But uh, at least this one, this time, stayed up. Woo! But I just don't want to, you know, aggravate the situation, so I'll save it till I put the pump in and uh, do a reveal. I don't just want to do a reveal for the fun of it. 14 and I have crippling dysphoria. I want to cut my chest off literally, it's so horrid. I honestly want to die and I just don't think I have the guts to tell my parents I'm trans. Tyler, what's, what's the problem with you, like... Like I said before, as long as you explain to your parents what's going on, the chances are 99% of parents, I think I'd safely say, you know, are willing to listen, at least. Whether they ever understand or not is a different story. You don't really need them to understand for you to be you. Um, I was around about your age when I realised that everything, you know, was a bit weird and wrong. And I kept it to myself. I've noticed that... I'm, I'm not sure quite how to explain this, but I know, I've noticed as the years have gone by, the youngsters are finding it harder and harder and harder to deal with transition. And I honestly think it's because of social media, you know. Um, I can't explain how. It makes sense in my head. But, yeah, I honestly think it's because of social media. Because social media wasn't around when I was 14, you know, 13, 14. And for me, yeah, I had dysphoria, but I kept it to myself, and I still went to school every day, and I still smiled and laughed with my friends. I still wore, you know, a skirt and girl shirts and stuff like that, and yeah, I hated it, but I just got on with it at the same time. And I, and deep down, I think it's just because I thought, well, it's not going to be like this forever, is it? You know, I know that much. It's not going to be like this forever. And that was back when I didn't even know surgery was available. I kind of just said to myself, it, it's definitely not going to be like this forever, so I'll be all right. I'm going to have to wrap this up real soon because I've got to go out. Um, but let me just get through these other things. Um, anyone, by the way, that's got any more questions, if I don't get around to answering you now in this video, um, the links are down below for uh, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, email, and whatever else I can think of. Um, they're all down below. You can drop me your questions on, on any of those platforms. Not everyone, because I noticed a few people will drop me the same message on every platform. You don't have to do that. Um, I'm in contact with every single one of them, so yeah, just drop me a message on any of those platforms and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, why do you choose Pump Over the Rod? Do you know? <laughs> do you know? I don't even know. Like, I think... I, th I, I don't even know. I think it's just that the pump looked more appealing. And then the surgeon basically said, because of the thickness and the weight of my penis, he said the pump would be more beneficial because the rod he felt like would never hold it up properly like it should. So, I mean, I've always been really, like, blasé about everything. I've never really done much research in, into it. I just listen to what the surgeons say and I go, well, what do you recommend? And he say, well, I recommend the pump. And I go, okay, we'll have the pump then. The only time I have ever forced something was when I asked him to remove it and initially he wasn't happy about doing that. He was like, I'd really rather save it. And I said, no, no, absolutely not. You need to remove it like now. So that's the only time I've ever forced an issue. Other than that, I've just been like, yeah, whatever you want to do, don't really mind. So yeah. Uh, Tyler James, I understand how you feel. I'm, fe I'm back. <laughs> Sorry, the, um, I don't know why that disconnected then. Yeah, as I was saying, I'm pretty sure there's Facebook pages with binder giveaways on there, so I um, tried searching in the FTM groups on Facebook and stuff. I can't at this time, but I'm almost positive they are out there. Oh, Leo, see, look. So, Leo, I really appreciate what you're writing on these videos. Um, okay, last one. Last question. Billy, do you remember me? I spoke to you just before I started tea. Then you asked me to keep you updated. Well, that's me now, a year and four months on tea. Is your picture up to date? Yeah, and, and Ryan, I do remember you. Um, so, yeah, if that picture's up to date, wow. Uh, if you have an even more up to date one, then please send it over. Um, Facebook, 
whatever you want to talk to me on. Um, yeah, please do, mate. Drop me a message. Um, let's have a chat. I've really got to go, guys. I've got to park now um, and go and pick up my girlfriend. But, um, you know, just to let you know, last little thing, I am coming to the States in July. I'll be going to Ohio uh, and Kentucky. So if anyone's in that area and would, you know, like to, you know, like to meet up, I would totally, totally, totally love to. So let me know. Um, but I'm going to go and oh, fall over, it seems. I'm going to finish my coffee and then dart off out. But yeah, thanks so much for tuning in. Um, I'm sorry I've neglected my channel for so long. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll catch you guys soon. Uh, much love to you all. Don't forget, contact me on the links below. Um, if you want to meet up with me, then yeah, drop me a message when I'm in the States or whatever, or even in Wales. But yeah, drop me a message. i got to go. See you later, guys.